हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू अफेयर्स क्लाउड माय नेम इज विकास सो फ्रेंड्स वी हैव एन एप्लीकेशन बाय द नेम कैरियर्स क्लाउड विच यू कैन गो एंड डाउनलोड थ्रू द प्ले स्टोर एंड वंस यू हैव डाउनलोडेड यू कैन लॉग इन विद योर जीमेल आईडी एंड व्हाई आई एम सजेस्टिंग यू दिस एप्लीकेशन बिकॉज दिस इज द वन स्टॉप सोल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द करंट अफेयर दिस इज द बेस्ट ऑफ द बेस्ट एप्लीकेशन एंड द प्लेटफॉर्म वेर यू कैन एनहेंस योर लर्निंग थ्रू हेल्प here you will be provided with multiple courses here you will be provided with multiple options of quizzes and even you here you will be provided current affairs on daily basis pdfs and quizzes will be provided to you on daily basis both in hindi as well as english here you will be provided current affairs with weekly basis and monthly basis also here remember once you have done watching our video then you can log in through this application take out the pdf read that pdf and go through the quizzes that will enhance your preparation same you have to do for weekly and same you have to do for the monthly also in monthly you will be provided with the top 100 important questions pdf and video also that will enhance your learning and it will be a very benefit and beneficial and important video for the revision perspective and not just this friends apart from this we also provide you banking and economic questions we provide you state current affairs such as of uttarakhand up tripura telangana and many more not just this apart from this we also provide you topic wise current affairs and the topics that we are providing you are really important these topics are such as national affairs international affairs important days sports defense science and technology apps and web portals obviously these are the important topics that are being asked in various exams across india so these are the topics that are must and should be covered and will be beneficial for the preparation of the students so such friends i'll highly suggest you to watch our video as they will be very beneficial for you hello everyone so in this video we will be discussing important current affairs of 26th of may the session will be very important so do pay attention till the end you will be learning multiple things that will be helping in your preparation let's start first question is which ministry launched udan 5.1 designed for helicopter routes udan scheme we know this scheme was earlier launched and what is this uday desh ka aam nagrik udan this was launched to enhance the connectivity to remote areas right it was launched to and hence connectivity to remote areas this is your udan scheme right and here the connectivity to the remote areas of the country will be achieved through helicopters right under udan 5.1 scheme correct and this is for the first time that under this scheme is designed for helicopter routes and under udan 5.1 it is designed in consultation with all the stakeholders including helicopter operators so that what can be the better route how can we implement it what should we take care of and all that right then remember the scheme will now allow routes where either origin or destination is in priority area earlier both points had to be in the priority area right and this uday desh ka aam nagrik this scheme was launched by ministry of civil aviation in october 2016 correct and it is a regional connectivity scheme correct so correct option here is the ministry that launched this uday desh ka aam nagrik 5.1 scheme is ministry of civil aviation correct here you can see ministry of civil aviation launched uday 5.1 udan 5.1 designed specifically for helicopters remember helicopter the term is important that which udan scheme was for helicopters udan 5.1 next here you can see udan 5.1 focuses on two emerging phenomena is indian civil aviation that is democratization of air travel with a focus on last mile connectivity and increasing demand for helicopters in aiding tourism next next is cbdt extends due date for re-registration and approval by charitable regional trust till september 30 2023 see we know 
these charitable trust and regional trust are a part where people can pay some amount of income they can contribute them and in return they will get a income uh, they will get a tax rebate here correct if you remember the paintings that we see those paint some paintings around the world they are like 3 million 4 million 10 million 15 million paintings are there and these paintings are basically for the ngos correct and what happens is when big players or when big businessman buys these paintings or donates this painting to any ngo that is considered to be a uh, donation and that amount of money can be deducted from their income tax right so they don't have to pay that amount of income tax that can be reduced or that can be deducted from the tax they have to pay correct so that is the reason sometimes the paintings are so high they are so high in value not ju just just even if you are contributing to any of the ngo and you if you have the right uh, payment slip that you every month or in a one year period when you will be in the financial year you paid some amount of money to the ngos or any charitable trust then you can use that particular receipt to get the income tax rebate correct so for the same central board of direct taxes has extended the due date for furnishing the application by the charitable or regional trust and institutions for re-registration and approval to 30th of september from 25th of september 2022 to 30th of september 2023 correct next next we are talking about international affairs recently prime minister narendra modi visited to japan Papua New Guinea and Australia from 19 to 24th of May 2023 correct and this was basically to attend multilateral summits including that of G7 that is group of seven as India has been invited as a guest country for G7 remember this which country was appointed or which country was recently invited as the guest country during the G7 summit, it was India. Correct. Then remember, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also unveiled a 42-inch tall bronze bust of Mahatma Gandhi in Hiroshima, Japan. Right. That means we say that a 42-inch tall bronze statue of Mahatma Gandhi was recently unveiled in Hiroshima, Japan by whom? By Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Then PM Modi along with the PM of Papua New Guinea, James Mayape released the translation of Tamil classic Thirukrul in the talk Pisin language to bring the Indian thought and culture closer to the people of the Southern Western Pacific nation. Correct? So remember these things. Then apart from this, remember PM Modi also jointly hosted the third summit of the Forum of India Pacific Islands Corporation with the PM of Papua New Guinea, that is James Marape. Correct. So these are three, four things that you can remember with uh, during the visit of Prime Minister, right? That he was uh, India was the guest country for G7. Then uh, Mahatma Gandhi's 42 inch tall bronze statue was inaugurated in Hiroshima, Japan. And Thirukkul, this was a Tamil classic that was released so that the culture can be promoted to the Southern Western Pacific region next next is what is the name of india's supercomputer that was ranked 75th in the top 500 global supercomputing list i repeat what is the name of india's supercomputer that was ranked 75th in the top 500 global supercomputing list what is the name of it aravat Aravat is the name of the artificial intelligence supercomputer. The rank of Aravat was 75th in the 61st edition of the top 500 global supercomputing list that was released by ISC in Germany. What is ISC? ISC is your international supercomputing conference. Another interesting thing that you need to remember is that Germany yesterday officially is in recession, right? Officially, Germany has been 
in recession now yesterday this news came out and there is a high chance that from 1st of june if there is a no uh, news or if there is no update on the debt ceiling and if the debt ceiling is not increased or any other measure is released then we will be seeing that usa will default default on their debt and there is a high chance that usa may enter into recession and if usa is in recession then the whole world be impacted through that correct so as of now just remember officially germany is in recession and what is the name of india's supercomputer that was ranked 75th it is aravat here you can see aravat ranked 75 in the global supercomputing list and this was the which edition it was your 61st edition of the top 500 global supercomputing list next dash city should be made or city cities should be made climate ready for solving climate crisis this was released by which organization so cities should be made climate ready and for this this data was released by which organization it is your world bank that is the world bank has released a report that is your thriving making cities green resilient and inclusive in changing climate basically what this report states says is that that in order to fight climate change we need to make our cities more advanced and more prone to the sustainable development goals that means they should more focus on the sustainable development goals that how can we create our cities more greener more resilient how can we make our cities more inclusive how can we make our cities that they should use renewable sources of energy they should use renewable sources of power and they should shift to green energy method carbon neutral should be there then they should not release pollution all right so these are some things that they we should work upon to make our cities more climate ready towards the climate crisis that is going on and for this this data was released by world bank correct on a per capita basis cities in high and upper middle income countries have the highest fossil carbon dioxide emission and those in the low countries have the lowest correct and the urban population is expected to grow by 2.5 billion by 2050 thus the protection and restoration of the ecosystem such as forest is needed for urban resilience and water security right and this assessment is based upon 10000 cities globally next question which organization approved a global greenhouse gas tracker i repeat which of the following organization approved a global greenhouse gas tracker it is your wmo that is your world meteorological congress this is the supreme body of the world meteorological organization right they have recently wmo world meteorological organization they have recently approved a global tracker from greenhouse gas emissions right monitoring initiative is to support the urgent action to reduce the heat mapping gases which are fueling the temperature increase and because of this temperature increase we are seeing that ice are melting in the polar regions the temperature are rising due to which we are seeing the temp uh, climate change right unexpected weather phenomena are happening say for example in pakistan last year almost one third of the pakistan was under water in uk we saw that temperature rose to a highest temperature in that area we see many lakes of uk were drought or we can they were dried upon uh, were dried then even in china we saw the uh, largest river there yangtze river it was also dried up correct we are seeing this uh, different phenomena and rising in temperature and this all contributes to the rise in the global greenhouse gases and in order to track those gases in order to track that greenhouse gas emission this tracker was recently approved by wm correct here basically four components will be observed carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide right n2o and some other amounts of other pollutions such as carbon monoxide 
right sulfur dioxide these are other also gases that also increase your or they contribute towards your greenhouse gases even water vapors to some extent are a greenhouse gas correct so remember these are the some components that will be monitored and in order to keep a check on them various sustainable development goals will be implemented various implementation will be done in the infrastructure so that we can shift from non renewable source of energy to the renewable source of energy correct coming back if we talk about wmo where is the headquarter of world meteorological organization it is in geneva switzerland next here you can see wmo approved a global greenhouse tracker next banking and finance union government approved digital communication system between the psu banks and ceib to check loan defaults we know that uh, in recent months the interest rates on the loan that people took have risen not just in india but all around the world if you take the case of united state it was 0% and now it is close to 5% so you can see that almost 5% there has been rise from 0 to 5% the interest rate has risen in india the interest rate should uh, interest rate on an average was earlier 6 to 7% but now it has been increased to 9 plus percent correct so we are seeing that because of the rise in the interest rate and this uh, contributes towards the increase in the payment of or monthly increase in the monthly emi of the loans that people are paying for which they have taken say for some people took the loan for home home loan right they bought a home some people took the loan for their businesses some people took personal loan due to which their emi has increases right so recently it was union government that has approved a digital communication system between the psu banks and ceib to check the loan defaults that how many people are defaulting on their loans the union government has ended the paper based communication and introduced a digital communication mechanism between the public sector undertaking banks and the central economic intelligence bureau to check the defaults on their loans under a digital mechanism the ceib will send a report digitally regarding borrowers to the public sector unit banks for a loan of amount up to 50 crore rupees or higher at pre approval stage within the 15 days of their request right if we talk about the introduction of this digital communication system at present it is mandatory for all the public sector unit banks to furnish a report from ceib regarding the loan seekers of 50 crore rupees or more now the union government has removed the paper based reporting system and introduced a new digital system to streamline the process correct and the new system will require banks to submit their request to ceib through the dedicated emails in a specified format correct next next is your paytm right paytm launched a upi sdk to enable customers pay directly within the merchant application i repeat paytm owner 19 company uh, 19 communication it is the parent company of paytm right they have recently launched paytm upi sdk allowing the customers of online merchants to make upi payments directly in line from the merchants mobile app by entering their upi pin and without getting redirected during the checkout this is the part of the existing upi acquiring arrangement between paytm payment service limited and paytm payments bank under which paytm payment services provided upi acquisition service to merchants this upi sdk is an add on feature under the name same arrangement correct directly you can remember this moving on hdfc bank they have partnered with manipal global academy of bfsi and launched the future bankers 2.0 i repeat question can be asked that future bankers 2.0 this is a pan india recruitment program to transfer young graduates into banking professionals within one year i repeat in order to transform young graduates into banking professionals within one year this young bankers 2.0 program was launched and this was launched by which organization it was hdfc bank 
in partnership with Manipal Global Academy they have launched this future bankers 2.0 that is a recruitment program that will be transforming young graduates into banking professionals correct moving on next is appointments and resignations senior judge luenis sarmas has been appointed as the caretaker of the pm of greek i repeat who has been appointed as the caretaker pm ahead of new elections for greece he will be luenis sarmas he is the senior judge right he is 66 years of age and he has been appointed as the caretaker prime minister of greece to lead the caretaker government until the repeat elections on 25th of june till 20 we can say he has been appointed as a interim prime minister say for example right so luenis sarmas he was born in march in 1957 correct and he is a senior judge and he has been appointed as the caretaker prime minister of greece capital of greece is athens and the currency that is being used in greece is euro next realme appointed we know realme is a mobile phone smartphone mobile uh, smartphones brand so realme appointed which actor as their new brand ambassador so realme appointed shahrukh khan as their new brand ambassador correct the announcement also coincides with the launch of realme's highly awaited flagship smartphone the realme 11 pro series 5g apart from this shahrukh khan is also the brand ambassador of tag heuer that is the brand, uh, watch brand then hyundai pepsi whirlpool nokia tag heuer dish tv lux denver atel hotstar these are all the brands of which shahrukh khan is the brand ambassador <coughs> next khaber khaber is the new generation blastic missile that was launched by which country recently remember it is iran that has successfully tested this khaber this khaber missile this is a surface to surface missile first thing that you need to remember high chance this this question can be asked that sir khaber is it is a surface to surface surface to air missile or air to air missile right it is your surface to surface then next thing it is a medium range missile medium range precision missile correct it was developed by which organization khaber it was developed by aio that is your aerospace industries organization that comes under the ministry of iran only right iran's ministry of defense so coming back khaber it is of iran surface to surface missile it is medium range developed by aio that is your aerospace industries organization correct next next thing you need to remember that this khaber has a potential of range medium range of almost 2000 km right it can carry a payload of up to 1500 kg correct this khaber missile is the latest version of the khromashar which is the iran's longest range missile till date correct so khaber it is the missile of iran now here you can see khaber this is khaber and it is the missile of iran it is a blastic missile right surface to surface blastic missile next next is related to your environment recently new gecko species were identified in the pakka melai hills of tamil nadu correct these are the new species of gecko that were discovered by the team of researchers that was led by v deepak a herpetologist and a scientist of university of wolverhampton of uk correct and what is the name of this new species the scientific name has been named as hemidactylus pecca melanesis all right hemidactylus uh, hemidactylus pecca melanesis this is the new name of this new species of the gecko that were discovered in the pakka melai hills of tamil nadu next is when do we observe international day of missing 
children. This International Day of the Missing Children is observed on 25th of May. Right? This day is observed across the globe to commemorate the missing children and generate awareness about the kidnappings of children. The day is widely referred to with a forgot me not flower as it is emblem. Right? Here you can see the day is referred to with a forget me not flower as their emblem. Correct? And this day is observed on 25th of May. The first ever edition of this day was observed in 2001. Next, World Thyroid Day. World Thyroid Day is annually observed across the globe on 25th of May. And it is to create awareness about the importance of thyroid gland, a small butterfly shaped gland in front of your neck. And it is to educate the general public about the thyroid disease. Correct. Mark this World Thyroid Day. When do we observe? It is observed on 25th of May. Next. <clears throat> Next is AIFF declares PK Banerjee's birth anniversary as the AIFF Grassroots Day. That is AIF is your AIFF All India Football Federation. They have declared June 23rd as the AIFF Grassroots Day to commemorate the birth anniversary of Indian footballer icon Pradeep Kumar Banerjee and to honor his legacy, 23rd of June will be observed as AIFF Grassroots Day that is All India Football Federation's Grassroots Day. This was to celebrate the birth anniversary of Indian football icon Pradeep Kumar Banerjee. All right. Also remember Pradeep Kumar Banerjee part represented India in three Asian games in Tokyo in 1958, uh, in 1962 in Jakarta, Indonesia, and then in 1966 in Bangkok, Thailand. Moving on. Next is state news. Singapore Investment Conclave. Tamil Nadu government signed six MOUs with the Singapore institution. So remember Tamil Nadu government signed six MOUs with the institutions and companies based in Singapore during the investment conclave of Tamil Nadu investors first part of the call at Singapore. Correct. During this very six MOUs were signed that you need to remember here. Correct. Similarly, if you remember UP Global Investor Summit was held. Where was this held? It was held in Lucknow. Correct. And it was held in February to attract the investors from different parts of the world. <clears throat> and moreover, here, remember, it is expected that every MOU here will be generating job opportunities for various individuals in this during this particular joint venture. Correct. Or during this MOUs. Next, X is your justice as Vidyanathan has been appointed as the acting chief justice of Madras High Court. So direct question, who has been appointed as the acting chief justice of the Madras High Court? He will be justice as Vidyanathan. Correct. He was appointed by the president of India under article 223 of the constitution of India. Correct. So friends, these were your important current affairs for the day. Now let's go for a quick revision. Ministry of Civil Aviation launched Udan 5.1 designated for helicopter routes. CBDT extended the due date for the re-registration and approval by the charitable religious trust till 30th of September. Highlights of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit to Japan, Papua New Guinea and Australia between 19 to 24th of May. Then India's AI supercomputer Aravat was ranked 75th in the top 500 global supercomputing list. Making cities climate ready crucial to solving climate crisis. This data was released by World Bank. WMO approved for a global greenhouse gas tracker. Union government approved digital communication systems between PSU banks and CEIB to check loan defaults. Then Paytm launched a UPI SDK to enable customers pay directly within the merchant application. HDFC Bank partnered with Manipal Global Academy of BFSI launches Future Bankers 2.0. Next, Senior Judge Loannis Sarmas has recently been appointed as the caretaker Prime Minister of Greece. So we can say he has been appointed as a 
interim prime minister of Greece. Then Realme ropes in Shah Rukh Khan as the new brand ambassador. Union Ayush Minister Sarbandana Sonowal inaugurated PCIMNH e-office and online portal. Iran successfully test launched Khaybar, the new generation blastic missile and it is a surface to surface blastic missile. Hemidactylus pekka melanesis. This is the name of the new gecko species that were identified in the Pakka Malai Hills in Tamil Nadu. International Missing Children's Day is observed on 25th of May. World Thyroid Day is observed on 25th of May. And AIFF declared PK Banerjee's birth anniversary as the AIFF Grassroots Day. Singapore Investment Conclave was held and Tamil Nadu government signed six MOUs with the Singapore institutions. Justice S. Vidyanathan has been appointed as the Acting Chief Justice of the Madras High Court. So friend, these were your important current affairs for the day. Now let's move to the revision part. Correct. First, Puducherry and LNTA Engineering, they signed an MOU to develop tourist spots under the center's SD 2.0. Next, PPPL, that is Paytm, uh, Paytm Payments Bank Limited, they have got the RBI approval to reappoint Vijay Shekhar Sharma as their part-time chairman for another one year and this will be his third term for this, right? Then who has been appointed as the brand ambassador of Tripura Tourism? He will be Saurav Ganguly. Next, Georgi Gosponidov, Georgi Gosponidov and Angela Rodel. They have won the International Booker Prize for 2023 for their, dark, uh, for their novel, Time Shelter, right? This novel was written in Bulgarian by Georgi Josponidov, but it was translated into English by Angela Rodel. <coughs> Next, Axis Bank, they have launched a digital onboarding platform, Sarathi, for the POS terminals, as you can see here, right? Next, SBI General Insurance, they have launched a shorty bond BIMA to, or basically, this uh, shorty bond BIMA was launched for infrastructure projects by SBI General Insurance. Next is Ladakh's annual Great Bear Festival. Ladakh Monlam Shenmo 2023 was held from 11 to 16th of May. I repeat, this is the Great Prayer Festival of Ladakh that is Monlam Shenmo. So friends, these were your revision part. Now let's move to the homework section. First is Navegao Nagzira Tiger Reserve. I repeat, Navegao Nagzira Tiger Reserve, which was seen in news, is located in which state? Second, which state has recently commenced the removal of the dotted lands in the state from prohibited list? Third, which country is set to manufacture generic variant of long-acting cabotagravir drug used for the HIV prevention? So these are your three homework questions, friends. I hope you have understood the assignment. All you have to do now is like and comment below and let us know what are your views for the same. So that's all for the day friends. Thank you and have a nice day. That's all for the day friends. I hope you enjoyed the session and you can follow us on the YouTube channel as well as apart from YouTube channel, you can go and follow us at Affairs Cloud Telegram channel. And if you have any queries related to the content or the of courses offered to you or the payment which you did on the application, you can contact us on the number provided that is 7677333862. Apart from this friends, you can follow us on the Facebook as well as on Instagram handle that is affairscloud underscore official. In the end friends, if you use a code that is Vikas10, you will be getting an additional extra 10% discount by using this code Vikas10. Also, if you have any problem regarding the course purchase, any problem regarding to our application, you can contact us on the mobile number that is 9677333862. And if you want to mail us, you can also mail us on support at the rate of affairscloud.com. And I assure you that our representative from us will be contacting you soon and resolving your issue.